Hey everybody, it's Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today I want to talk about scripting, more specifically GD script. And today we're going to go ahead and make a door. So it's going to teach us about GD script, it's going to teach us about areas, and it's going to teach us about uh, event driven development. So let's go ahead and jump into this. All right, guys, so we're sitting here in Godot, and the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna build a small room so that the user has a place to go into, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click up here, we're gonna add a child node, we're gonna add a mesh instance, so go ahead and just type mesh, and go ahead and click on mesh instance. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on mesh, we're gonna change it to a cube mesh, we're going to switch to our scale tool, you can hit either that button up there, or you can hit E on your keyboard as a hotkey. Now, once you hit control to snap, and then you pull up, we want to snap up a few, and then we want to scale it in a little bit, and then we want to scale it out a tiny bit as well. Something about, I don't know, about yay big. And then we'll move it back a few like that, and we will move like this. We'll pull this up. Ooh, I think I scaled it a little too large. So let's go ahead and scale it down some. That's probably too much. So let's scale up. Now in Godot, if you hit Control D, that will duplicate. So we can duplicate it. We will pull this out. And we will go ahead and scale this. So let's scale it down. I don't know about yay much. Maybe a bit more, actually. We'll go down one more. And then we will go back like this. So now you can see we have kind of like this wall here. We will control D one more time. We will rotate this like that. And then we're going to go ahead and move this like that. So you can see this doesn't quite match up. So let's grab our selection and drag it over. And I know this doesn't look great, but it's going to at least get the point across as to what we're trying to do. So we'll do that. And then we will control duplicate hit, uh, W and drag this over until it matches. Now you can see we have this nice little doorway here. So what we'll do is we will also uh, hit Q, click on that, control duplicate, control to drag up and rotate it. And that will provide us with our top of our little building here. So let's put this down like that. We'll put this in front. And again, I know it doesn't look amazing, but that's, it's fine. We're just trying to show off a little cool feature or we're going to, you know, show off how to make a door. So it's nothing too crazy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to control duplicate this one more time. We're going to drag this over and we are going to scale this down like that. So it's no longer colliding with anything or causing any trouble. And we'll just say it's, I don't know, right about here is fine. So. What we need to do now is we need to add collision to all of this. So let's go ahead and select all of the, well, I guess we can't, can we do that? Is that a thing? No, it doesn't look like it. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to right click it, add a resource, add a collision shape, and we're going to go ahead and add a box shape to it. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna automatically wrap around that box as you can see, and we'll do the same thing for the rest of them. Okay, so now that we've got all of those done, you can see I put collision shapes underneath every one of them. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna add in a static body node. I'm going to drag this underneath the static body mode and I'm gonna pull this out of the mesh instance. Now, the reason why we put this underneath the mesh instance was so that it would perfectly encapsulate that wall. If you didn't do it that way, what would have happened is if you added a child node and you added a collision, shape and then you went ahead and added your box shape it would just throw it into the center and you would be going through and, and messing with creating all of your walls and your proper collisions on all of them so it just saves a lot of trouble if you just do it underneath the mesh and then you just pull it out of the mesh so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of our static mesh objects that we don't want to move so it's all of this we're going to drag all of that underneath the static body so that way it, we know that that's not gonna move, if that makes sense. So, And also we're gonna drag these out and there we go. So what is that going to do? Well, what that's gonna do is if we hit click on play scene, you'll see that I can move around, I can run up to this and now I'm colliding with it, which is great. 
See? So now I can't get in there. Now I don't have any collision on the door right now, even though I have a box collider on there, that doesn't mean that it has collision until until I have a, a, a body attached to it. It doesn't know to, to have that part of physics calculations, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna click on add child node. I'm gonna put in a static body here because the door itself is not gonna be moving. So we'll go ahead and put this mesh instance. Actually, what we'll do is we'll put the static body underneath here and then we'll click on the mesh, uh, the static instance and then zero, zero, zero. So now it is zeroed out to that location. And then we can go ahead and drag static body back out and then drag the mesh instance in. Now, the reason why you want to do that is because if you don't and you look over here, you can see that this object here is attached over here and that's a problem. So what you can do is you can just drag these out like that, click on your static body, put it underneath something or wherever you think it should be. So for in this instance, I would like to have it back here. I don't know, somewhere like that would be good. And then what we'll do is we will grab all these collision and mesh instances and drag them underneath the static object. And you can see now they conform nicely with that. So what are we gonna do now? Well, we wanna make this into a door. And as you can see, if I go ahead and play this and I, whoop, and I run up here like this and I hit the wall, well, I can't get in, right? So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and code this door so that it opens. And by the way, this is a huge door, but that's besides the point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna Alt F4, get out of there, and we will go ahead and do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, add a child node, type in an area, and what an area is, is it's a general purpose node that detects uh, influence and uh, 3D objects or 2D objects. Um, that's what the area 2D is for. So if I go ahead and click on area, and I'm going to go ahead and put this underneath my static body right here, I'll put it underneath. I will go inside, click on area and then zero it out with my transforms again so that it just snaps right, right up to it. And then what we'll do is we will drag this over here to act kind of like a door hinge. So if we were to take our area, pull it out and then put our static body underneath it, when we rotate this, you will see that it seems to work, right? So. You can see here, we got a, a little issue right here. So it says this node has no shape, so it can't collide or interact with other objects. Consider adding a collision shape or collision polygon. So what does that mean? Well, we need to add a collision shape, kind of like what we did with the door, but this time we need to add a new one. So let's go collision shape like that. And you will see that if we click on our collision shape and we go ahead and add a box shape, you can see that there's this box here. So what we'll do is we'll pull this out and we'll put this inside of here. We'll say, I don't know, something like this right here. And we will go ahead and uh, drag this up to match the whole height of the door. So now that we have our building set up and we have our area set up and we have our body set up, now I'm going to talk about scripting, the fun part, the stuff that makes everything work. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to right click, add a child node. We're going to add in a node, a spatial node here. We'll call this door. And then we will drag our static body and our collision shape underneath. Or I'm sorry, our collision shape will stay up there, but we will drag our door underneath there. So now again, like I showed you earlier, it rotates it, but without rotating that area because if you rotate that area everything's going to freak out on you so what we're going to do is we're going to right click the door and anytime you want to attach a script you will go to this attach script button go ahead and click that and you'll see that it'll come up and ask you what you want to call it in this case i will call it door dot uh gd and we will create it so you'll see here that it'll go it, it extends spatial You'll see that when this is just 
code for extending a class don't worry about that like i said before we'll get with the, we'll get to there eventually uh function ready means when the application starts and it shows up the first time so if you were to build like make the object exist this code would run so for instance if we were to print and then open parentheses quote test and i save this and then i go ahead and hit i hit play you will see that we will see test and i will highlight it in the uh, bottom left hand corner here that it says test so that's how you go ahead and um, execute code right when the application starts and this section here is all about handling the every single frame um interaction here so what we'll do is we'll print test and you'll see that if i print test here you'll see i have tests like crazy going on so this runs every single frame every time your computer refreshes it will go ahead and blow up your um it'll go ahead and run and pretty much blow up your console so what we'll do is we'll delete that and now i want to talk about events because events are extremely important in godot well what is an event so if i go ahead and i click on my area and i come over here to node you will see that there is these different events there's area entered area shape enter and uh body enter and body shape entered now i'll leave some documentation in in, in the comments or in the uh description the little doobly doo down there and uh so you could that way you can run through and and uh look at all the different things and what they're for but in our case we're just going to go ahead and use body entered so we'll, we'll right click this and we will connect it so what this is doing is it's saying when a body gets entered who are we going to notify that that body was entered so if we scroll down you'll see that there is a door here that we made our script so what we'll do is we will click on that door and i'm going to say on door area entered underscore door area entered you will see that it populates this with this function call now a function is just a reusable piece of code so if i were to create a function i could call it for instance if i want to call it here i could just go underscore on door area body entered you'll see that it's going to go ahead and call this every single frame so it's designed so that's what it's designed for right is to be reusable pieces of code now if i go ahead and i enter on this and i go print we got in there bb right what that's gonna do and we hit Control s to save what that's gonna do is when we enter into that door area it's gonna go ahead and say we got in there so if i hit play and I run up here, we got in there that easy. Now, some of you might be running into an issue where you're getting multiple different, um, multiple different events. And that's either a, cause your, your, uh, collision box is too big and it's colliding with other things. Or if you don't want that, if you don't want to make your collision box smaller, what you can go ahead and do is you can go ahead and come up to your area go to your inspector and then change your collision layer so if i change this layer let's say i change this layer up here what's going to happen is if i hit play you will see that we have two we got in there bb because it is colliding with the wall and with the other wall and that's how that operates right so if we hit alt f4 and we change the layer down like this and then we go to the player and we force the same thing so the player can collide with both layers what that's going to do is it's going to force the collision to only happen with the player so if i run up here that's the only collision that it has so now if we do the exact same thing with the area but on exit so if we click on this little um node icon and then come over here we right click connect and then we scroll down we click on door on door area exited 
you'll see that we have this other function here. So now if I print, we lost it, BB, right? Now, if I hit play, what's going to happen is when I run up there, now we're in there, now we lost it. So that's pretty much how you do event-driven development inside of Godot. So event-driven development is you do an event and then it does some code. And that's basically the gist of it. All right, so now that we've got our two events calling, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and rotate this door by 90 degrees to make an automated door of sorts. So what we're going to do is we're going to type rotate Y and then we're going to put 90 down. And what that's going to do, if I go ahead and I play this and I run up here, it's going to rotate the door. But you notice that it didn't quite rotate it perfectly 90 degrees. It rotated it kind of like, I want to say, what, 95, 96 degrees, maybe 110, 120 degrees. So it's not quite a 90 degrees. Now, why is that? Well, the reason why that is, is because you need to convert it from degrees to radians and the reason why is because honestly there's a lot of math and i can leave an article in the doobly-doo below that'll kind of explain it but basically what we need to do is we need to do degree two rad and we will close uh, open this and then close it and what that's going to do is it's going to rotate it by 90 degrees so let's move up to it boop and you'll see that it rotated a perfect 90 degrees. So let's control F4, and then let's do that as a negative. And now we need to make it go back. So let's go ahead and copy this, paste it, and then we will rotate it back 90 degrees. So let's go ahead and hit play. And you will see that if I run up here, it opens up. And then if I leave, it closes. So that's how you basically make a basic door. See? So, now we're gonna talk real quick about how to make reusable components. I don't believe I covered this yet, but it is extremely important that you know. So if we come up here to the 3D button, we click on it and you see this object. If I take this area, let's call it a auto door and I right click it, and I go ahead and save a branch as seen and I call it an auto door dot T uh, S C N and I save that what's going to happen is now I have this auto door dot T S C N what's cool about that is the same thing with materials if I go ahead and I drag this out there's my door so now I have well, this is underneath there so let me drag that out so now I have this door here that I can place anywhere in the project or in any scene or any project and it will respect the same exact code that we put. So if I go ahead and I run this project, you'll see there's a door here and a door here and look, it does the same exact thing as you would expect. So that's the beauty and the power of creating these uh, scenes. Now, if I go ahead and I click on this static body and I right click and I do a save branch as scene and let's just call it shack. Now, if I pull shack out, I have a shack here. Now, why is that important? Well, let's go ahead and delete both of our doors and they are now gone. But if I open up my static body, let's say, and here's my static body. So if I go ahead and I'm going to center this out real quick, just so that it's centered, um, you don't have to, but I like to, if I right click this, actually, I don't even need to right click it. If I just drag this up to my static body and I let go, you will see here is my door. Now, if I drag this door up to here, just like this, and I align it up decently well, when I save this, you will notice that both of these will get this the same door. So if I hit Control S, now suddenly they all have that door. Now you can see it's a little, 
Now you can see it's a little on the off side, so let's see if that's what the case is. Ah, see, it's, uh, it's my mistake. So let's go ahead and pull this back a tiny bit, save it, and then you'll see, bam, look at that. So if I go ahead and I remove this static body and I move this one back, now if I make changes, So now you'll see that if I move this, it moves it with this object. Now, if I go into here and I make any changes, it's going to reflect on this. But also, if I go in here and I make any changes, it will reflect on the um, on all of the instances of this object. So let's say, for instance, I go in here and I add in a mesh object, right? Let's go ahead and add a mesh instance. And then let's go ahead and add a cube, right? Well, we'll add a cylinder, I guess. Uh, and we will do this, and then we will scale it by hitting uh, R, and we will scale it down some. We'll go ahead and scale it down a bit more. And then let's go ahead and hit W and move this over. So it's got like this giant door handle, basically. If I go ahead and I hit Control S, now this door has that door handle. Now this door has that door handle. And that's kind of the power of the scene system within Godot. And also anything that I have outside of that. So for instance, if I pull, if I pull my auto door out here, you will see that even in here, let's drag this out, even inside of here, and I pull this up, this door also has that handle. So even though it's not in this specific objects scene, it's still reflects what its door object scene has. Let's talk about making animations inside of Godot. So uh, basically animations in Godot is pretty easy. Well, let's go ahead and animate this door to rotate. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna come down to this animation tab down here and I will highlight this for you guys. But basically you can select an animation player node to create and edit animations. So let's go ahead and do that. First things first, one of the things that we need to understand is this is inside of a scene okay so let's drag in here and then we said we have the door now we can't animate the door to open inside of here because this is a i guess it's a scene so you you could animate it but it wouldn't be a good idea so let's go ahead and drop down into the door scene and let's make sure that this is zeroed out. One of the things you want to always make sure is that this is all zeroed out. It's going to mess with all of your scenes that I when you zero it out, but it's better off to have it zeroed out than it is to have it in a funky situation. And what I always like to do is I like to add in a child node here and then I add in a node or a spatial and then I will call this door well i guess i can't call it door so we'll call it door underscore base and then we'll actually make this if we right click this we can reparent as the scene root so make that the scene root and that will drop this into here and then what we can do since this is the center we can readjust our scene root to be something like this and that just makes things easier for lining up for those of you who like if you're going to reuse this door, we should make it so it's easily relineable, right? So to make it makes sense. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and click on our static body, or I guess our door, and we're going to right click and add a child note. We're going to add a animation. A and I and A T animation player. We'll head in our, we'll discuss what an animation tree is later. Um, probably once we get into more uh, in-depth animations like AI animations and things like that. And that'll get covered in later tutorials and later tutorial series. But for right now, we're just gonna do a basic animation player. And then what we can do is we can click on this, come down here, click on animation here, click, and then click new. And then we're gonna call it door open. And I don't like to use spaces. All right, so now we've got door open here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a track and it's going to be a 3D transformation track. Now the beauty of 
Godot's animation engine is you have property tracks, animation or 3D transformation tracks, call method, Bezier curve, audio playback and animation playback. So you can actually animate pretty much anything inside of Godot, which is fantastic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a 3D transformation track and what it'll do is it'll ask you to select a node that's gonna be animated. We want our door to be animated. So let's go ahead and click that and hit okay. So now what we can do is we can come over to our door, come down here with our transformation and hit this little key icon. So we'll hit that and it says, hey, do you wanna create a new track? Yes. So we'll go ahead and create a new track. You'll see it here. And then if we pull this up, let's say it takes about a second to open the door and then we will rotate this door 90 degrees. So minus 90, bam. What that's gonna do is it's gonna create an animation that opens the door. So if we hit play, there you go. So that just, it feels nicer, right? What we can also do is we can do different little continuous, discrete, trigger, capture. We can also do different types of um, animation fall off. So if we did like cubic, you'll see that it's different slightly. How it opens, it opens slightly. Um, it opens slightly smoother. Uh, generally speaking, I try to use that more often than not. Uh, and what you can do now, so now that we have this basic animation, you can see that we can just open the door. Some of the other options here is if you come up here, you can tell it to auto play on load, right? So what'll happen is when it loads, it plays the animation. You can click edit, which will edit properties of it. So things like copying track, scaling it, uh, duplicating it, you know, going to each step. This option does onion skinning. Don't worry about it. That's something more complicated than what we're going to need. You have your onion skinning options. You have the ability to pin this. So it'll actually pin it. So it's here, right? And that way you could click on other animation players or anything like that. And it wouldn't change the screen. Um, you have continuous looping. So if you were to hit that and then hit play, what would happen is it would loop it. So you can make your adjustments, which is fantastic. So make sure you, you turn that on when you're doing anything crazy. Um, animation length, which if you change this to like five, it'll continue playing for five seconds. So you can see. So now what this is doing is it's going back after it opens. So if we change that back to one. You'll see that it snaps like that. And the reason why we want that is because it's okay that it snaps back because this is an animation that's gonna be played only when the door opens. So it's not the door opening and closing. We're gonna create a separate animation for the door closing. Okay, so now that we have our animation working, right? I wanna make this cooler. So let's talk about a different type of track. So let's go ahead and delete this and we'll get rid of that. So that's how you do a basic animation. So we'll get rid of both of those tracks. They're not necessary anymore. Um, we're going to talk about the more complicated, but in my opinion, better Bezier curve track. So we go ahead and click on that and we pick on, pick the door again, and then we choose different things that we can animate here. Let's animate the rotation degrees. So we'll double click that and you will see that we have these rotation degrees. If we right click here and go ahead and insert a key, and then we pull this up to here. We rotate this by negative 90 degrees, which um, if you don't want to do it that way, if you actually don't want to animate it that way, you don't have to. You can actually just click on these little um, animation uh, keyframes, which a keyframe is is like saving a state of a um, property. So if you think about it, like uh, a keyframe is just a visual representation of that state. And then it allows you to uh, tween, right? Which is uh, animate between two states. So this state is saved here saying the value is, you know, in this case, minus five. So let's go ahead and set that to zero because there's no reason for it to be minus five. Um, minus five, and then if we bring it up to one and we click on this, you can see that the value is a minus 95. So let's go ahead and put that to, oops, not minus 95, but minus, 90. So now you can see that we're animating between those two uh, values. That's all this does. It just animates between values. 
So what we can do now is if we click over here, so you can see you have the rotation X and we don't need that. So we can go ahead and get rid of that. And the rotation Z, we also don't need that. So we can get rid of that. But this little button here is your curve editor. If you click on that, what's going to happen is Godot is going to bring up this little curve editor. Now, that's really powerful because you can change how this animation feels. Right now, it feels nice and smooth, right? But what if we wanted to change it so that it feels you know, more aggressive, right? So now you can see it takes longer for it to open. So if you drag these up, so see how that works. So you could actually do this, right? So let's go ahead and drag this down. Let's drag this over like this. Actually, let's drag this down some. One of the things that you need to worry about is if you drag this over to 1.1, see how it says time 1.1, that's past the animation amount, so it's going to break on you. So if you drag this back to one and let go, you'll notice that your animation continues. So that's a common caveat or a common issue that a lot of people run into is that they just drag this over one by accident and suddenly their animation breaks. So just keep that in mind. And if we pull this down like this, you'll see that we can make it so that the door swings open wildly, right? So that's the beauty of an animation curve editor is that it allows you to really mess with the curve and how it would operate and how it would look. Um, and you can really get a good feeling door if you just mess with it. Now, obviously I'm making it way worse than what it needs to be, but you get what I'm trying to show you at least. And that's, basically the gist of the curve portion of the editor so let's go ahead and, and make this into something that's semi decent so let's do something like this let's do something like that so it gets a little bit more acceleration and let's drag this ever so slightly back down so now the door just swings open right so that's pretty decent um All right, so now what's gonna happen is if I shut off a loop, we'll see it cuts at 91 and we don't want it to cut at 91. We want it to actually cut it at 90. So let's go ahead and drag this up to 90. About, it doesn't need to be perfect. All right, so now this is at about 90. So now you can see when we swing open our door, there you go. So that's a nice feeling animation. So now let's go ahead and do the same thing, but with close. So what we'll do is we'll add a new animation. We'll go door close, hit enter. We will add a uh, Bezier track and we will click on door. We will do rotation. Again, we don't need X or Z and you don't, you could keep it, but it's not going to help. It's not super useful to keep them around. It's just extra stuff polluting your view. So I wouldn't do it if you didn't, if you don't have to. Uh, then what I would do is I would rotate this 90 so that you can start with 90 and we'll go ahead and add a track here. And then you will see, poof, right? So now let's go ahead and click on the Bezier button and we will pull this back, pull this back like so and normally doors don't um they don't rotate far past what they have or far past the door jam because the door jam would stop them so we don't want it to um we don't want it to cause trouble right we don't want it to, to go past the door jam that wouldn't make sense so if you see that door let's There we go. That's not too shabby. So let's go ahead and stop that. And now again, remember the beauty of this is this will reflect across all of our doors. So we only had to make one change and it affect every door in our project. So we click on the door script and come down here and you see that we have this rotate, right? Well, we don't want that anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to go dollar sign to reference an object. And then we're going to grab our animation player dot play. 
door open. And then we're going to do the exact same thing down here. We're going to say animation play door close, right? All right. So now the beauty of all of this little bit of a code, if I hit play in my demo project, well, I have to reset my door because I moved it. I forgot about that. So let's go ahead and reset the door. So because we moved our stuff, if we click down in our static, you'll see that our door is still in the correct location according to the project, but it's not in the correct location anymore. Now let's take a look at our door base and you'll see that our door was rotated by 90 degrees. So let's go ahead and set that to zero. So now it's perfectly flat once again. Our door base is in the correct place. Let's save that. Go back to our shack. You'll see our shack has it in the correct place now. Well, at least in the correct place in terms of this. So we'll drag this down. Just like so. Drag this up and forward and over. All right. And that should let's save that and let's see how that looks in our demo project, because you can see that we have some stuff down here. Um, so we just kind of want to make it look OK. So let's drag this down a tiny bit like that. And what's beautiful about it is you can think of this as kind of like the floor. So these extend a little bit further down than they probably should, but uh, it's okay. This is for demo purposes anyway. So we'll click on that and you'll see, look at that, there's your door. So now what we'll do is we'll hit play and then we'll run up to here and you'll see that it played our animation, but now we've got a problem. It's still animating. So let's go figure out why, right? So let's see what's going on. If we look at our door closed animation, we have looping on. Let's shut that off. Now, if we come back here and hit play, you'll notice that it doesn't do that anymore. And that is how you do animations. But just remember that you want to keep that looping as off uh, when you're doing a single use animation. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we covered basic coding in Godot. We covered animations. We covered uh, basically the scene system and how it operates. And, you know, we covered a whole lot of stuff in this. So if you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. And if you want a written companion to this, let me know. I'm going to probably be starting a blog eventually uh, going over the basics. And let me know if there's anything special you guys want to learn because, you know, I'm here to great content for you guys. And I want to make sure that you guys are um, happy with the content that I create. So hit me up in the comments below if there's anything special that you guys want to know. Thank you so much for watching again. I'll see you next time.